What's up guys, it's Alden Anthony and welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. And in today's video, I'm going to tell the story of how I picked up a perfectly good Honda Civic for $900. Let's get started. All right guys, so I wanted to make a video telling the story of how I picked up a perfectly good Honda Civic for $900. I think that the story is pretty funny in an unfortunate way, so hopefully you'll laugh, hopefully you'll cry, uh, and hopefully you'll be happy for me with the end result here. So I know a lot of people wanted to know how I picked up a $900 Honda Civic in my introduction video, and uh, this is the story. All right guys, so apparently I couldn't talk and drive at the same time today because I have the attention span of a small squirrel. So I decided to tell this story through the power of voiceover instead, like a true storyteller. Now, if you guys watch my first video on this car, you'll know that this car is a part of a challenge with my friends at work. That's the whole point of this car. Now, this challenge is very simple. Basically, we got into an argument all saying who could build the best car for $3,000 or less and be able to sell it for more than $3,000 to make a profit off our hard work. Well, that argument soon turned into a reality and we had to put our money where our mouth was. And next thing you know, we were all out buying cheap cars. Now, the rules for this challenge are very simple. Basically, we could spend no more than $3,000 on a project car, but we had to spend a full $3,000. So how this works is basically, if I spent $500 on a car, that means I have $2,500 to put into it. But if I spend $2,500 on a car, then I only have 500 bucks to put into it. Does that make sense? So it's a very simple rule set, but basically we have to spend $3,000 on this car to hopefully profit over that and show each other who's boss. So that's the main story of kind of how this thing all came about, but that's not the main, main story. The story is actually everything I went through before I got this car. So yeah, while I wish this was some fairy tale story where all day Anthony ends up with all the clean civics in the world, uh, that wasn't the case. This was one of those situations where I definitely had to work for it. So with that said, me and my friends set a start date for this cheap car challenge and we began. We started frantically looking for cheap cars in all the places you'd normally look. Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, you name it. And by frantically looking, I mean we were literally loading pages every single minute because that's just how crazy the used car market is right now. If it runs and drives for under $3,000, chances are it's going to sell within minutes, so we knew we had to be quick. Now, to be honest with you guys, this was my first time looking for a car within this price range with the intent to buy and fix up and then hopefully sell down the road. All the other cars, for example, just kind of fell into my lap. Uh, the red Honda Civic kind of fell into my lap. The Dodge Ram kind of fell into my lap, literally. Uh, so this case, I was actually actively looking for something within this price range. Now, I knew that the cars are going to be less than ideal and they're probably going to be pretty janky, but it wasn't so much the cars that were the problem. It was the freaking sellers, man. I can't even begin to describe how many headaches I had going through this process and how frustrating it was dealing with the people selling these cheap cars. It wasn't so much the cars, like I said, it was the ghosting. It was the vagueness of every single description on every single post. It was the pictures of the cars. I mean, hell, half the time they weren't even pictures of the cars. They were just pictures of the sellers. I mean, they would literally be their face from their camera roll in the sale post. And I'm like, what in the hell is actually going on? Are you selling a car or are you selling yourself? Because I'm getting some really strange vibes from the sale post and I don't like it. But it was just a lot of dealing with crap that I didn't want to deal with. And all I wanted was a decent, good running car. That's all I wanted. But these people really threw me for a loop. And so uh, with that said, my friends are able to find their cars within a matter of days. They have very different tastes than what I have. One of them's into Euro cars, the other one's into trucks, and I myself, obviously, into tuner cars. Um, had a whole nother challenge for myself trying to find something clean within the tuner realm. But what they didn't know was that I really wasn't being picky about what car to find. I didn't even care if it was a tuner car. I just wanted any car because I was just that desperate to find something that could run and drive for under $3,000 that I could fix up. I mean, literally, domestics, trucks, you name it, I was looking at it. So that's where the first story begins, where I checked out my very first domestic. So the first car on my list was honestly a car I knew nothing about, a 2000 Ford Mustang GT convertible. 
pure domestic, baby. And in the photos, it actually looked pretty dang good. The seller was asking 3,200 bucks, but I thought I might have some wiggle room to be able to talk them down to make it fit within my budget. Now, what I wasn't expecting was that this was gonna be a total catfish situation indeed. So I drove out to the beautiful town of Emmett, Idaho that I love visiting so much to meet the seller and check out the car in person. Now, the car itself was way jankier than what I could have expected. The interior was completely torn up. The wiring harness for the stereo was cut. The convertible top, I don't even know if that worked, but it was pretty janky as well. But the seller said that the engine was extremely strong and I should go drive that American Pony as fast as I could. And I said, okay. So he tossed me the keys and I took that on the sketchiest test drive of my life. About halfway through, I realized that something just didn't feel right. So I pulled over to check it out. Turns out that the tires were so dry rotted on the sidewalls that the wheel was shifting in and out of the tire. How that's possible, I don't even know, but it was still holding a bead. So I drove it right back to his house and I said, man, this just isn't going to work for me. And he was totally cool about it. Honestly, he was the coolest seller I've worked with with this entire experience. And so one thing I do want to point out though, is I have no idea how these Mustangs are causing so much chaos because that was hands down one of the slowest vehicles I've ever driven based on the spec sheet alone and uh, not very fun at that. So that car just wasn't going to work out. So it was time to move on to the next one. So fortunately round two was something more in my realm, a 1991 Honda Civic EF hatchback in red, mind you, something I've actually always wanted. So I got excited about this car because it already had a D16 Z6 swap. It was running a Honda data unit, so I believe it was probably boosted at one time, but that was okay with me because it looked relatively clean. So I contacted the seller and we exchanged all of seven messages before I said, hey, I wanna come check this thing out in person. We set up a time and go figure, um, right before I was about to leave, about an hour before I went to leave, I checked my messages and it shows that the car is sold. Sold? How could it sell? Because I'm coming to check it out, right? I, I I set up a time with you. No, it doesn't really work like that because you're dealing with Honda people and Honda people, as much as I love my fellow Honda people, honestly, some of us are very slimy and so they'll do things like this. And so I contact him, I say, it did it really sell? And he said, yeah, man, it sold, end of story. So something to learn from this is that nothing is set in stone, nothing is yours until you're standing in front of that car in person with cash in hand and they have a title and you do the exchange. So that car didn't work out, but honestly, it was probably for the better. So you might be thinking, Anthony, the third time's a charm, right? No, hell no, shit, this was the worst one of all of them. This, my friends, was a 1990 Jeep Cherokee lifted on KO3 tires and honestly looked pretty decent in the photos. I got so excited about this car. I was already part shopping because I knew I wanted it that bad. So I contacted the seller first thing in the morning and I actually called him. I'm gonna call him Andy for this story. Me and Andy had a great conversation on the phone, 30 minutes, mind you. He told me about how his family was out golfing and he would be home later this evening for me to come check it out. Said I really was gonna like what I saw and I got so excited. I'm like, oh my God, where do you live? He said, I live out in Payette, Idaho. Payette? Holy crap, that's the Oregon border, but okay, I'll drive that far because he seemed like a nice guy. So I get my friend Dane to drive me out all the way to Oregon during an apocalyptic storm. It was so crappy, but we did it because I knew it was gonna be worth it, right? No, 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 because I stopped at a porta potty on the way there, and if that was an analogy for this situation, then I don't really know what was. So we pull up to his house. His house is actually a trailer um, on a nice piece of land, and so we go to start pulling up, and I look down this pathway, and I see the Jeep. I see it. Dane, there it is. The Jeep, it looks awesome. But there's, he has a big family. Holy crap, he's got like six, seven people down there. Man, the guy's got a big family. So, okay, cool, let's go down there and check it out. So we park and we start walking down there and I say, hey, uh, where's Andy here? And he's like, hey man, it's me right over here. I said, okay. So I walk up and I start looking around. I see a kid in crutches over there. I see a guy laying on the ground, literally rolling in dog shit. And um, seriously, his wife is in the driver's seat barking orders at him. There's another guy somewhere else. And I said, who, Andy, who are these people? And he's like, I don't know, man, this is crazy. I just told people I was gonna be home at this time and everybody showed up. <laughs> Holy crap, Andy, have you never done this before in your life? Are you trying to create a bidding war? He's like, well, I, I, I kind of guess I am. 
Oh my god, so I got one guy rolling around in dog shit on the ground. I got his janky wife sitting in the driver's seat. I got a kid in crutches over here. So I talked to the kid in crutches. I said, hey man, so what's going on? He was like, I don't know, man. I was just showing up to check out this Jeep because, you know, I broke my leg and I thought that this would be an easy car to get in. Tiny Tim literally showed up and now there's all these other people trying to basically outbid him in this bidding war for this Jeep. And I checked out this Jeep. This Jeep was janky, dude. Holy crap, this thing was bad in person. But yet the guy rolling around in dog shit on the ground didn't mind. He was doing his full check, his full once over of this thing. And I was just like, holy smokes, what is this situation? This, this sucks. So, I'm sorry, I'm getting very amped up here because that's just how crazy the situation was. So then the guy rolling around in dog shit gets up, sits in the driver's seat and says, hey, I'm taking it for a test drive. And Andy says, sounds good, man, go for it. So now it is me and seven other people that were there looking to check out this car in this weird, awkward situation as this thing drives off. And I look over at Andy and I said, man, you've really never done this before, have you? And he's like, no, man, I just don't really sell cars. First off, I think he's a liar. Second off, this just sucks. So I said, hey man, if I drove all this way, um, can you at least make some food for us? Can I have a beer? You know, what do you got, right? So we stood there for a little bit and I see the Jeep drive back down the hill and the guy pulls out and um, he looks at me like, well, do you wanna drive it? And I'm like, well, is this like a Jeep gangbang situation? What? I don't wanna drive the Jeep. That guy was just rolling around in dog shit. I don't wanna be covered in dog shit. So obviously I'm pretty mad. I made the situation a little bit more awkward. I said some things I probably shouldn't have um, and we left, right? We drove all the way back to Boise and that's the only thing I could talk about. I was so freaking mad about this situation, I, I couldn't even imagine. And the guy even said, he's like, I wouldn't take any less than 2,800 bucks anyways. And I'm like, well, you've created a bidding war, so I don't know what it's gonna go up to. So um, Andy, good luck with your sale, whatever. So um, that didn't work out, and that fired me up the most. I hated that situation. If you're ever in that situation, just freaking leave. Don't even, don't even deal with it. It's not worth your time, and it's not worth your time to deal with those kind of people. So at this point, you can imagine I'm feeling pretty defeated, right? I don't even wanna do this freaking challenge anymore, but another car pops up and this thing popped up quick and I knew I had to be on it. It was a 1998 BMW Z3 convertible and it was in like this kind of cool purple blue color and I was like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I contacted the seller immediately. It was like 10 minutes after it had been posted. And I said, hey man, I'm coming down to Nampa right now, five o'clock traffic, it's gonna take me a minute. I'm gonna try to get there as fast as I can. So I get a ride out there from Dane again, and uh, we get stuck in traffic, which sucks. I had the cash on me, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm like, I'm gonna buy this car, but I knew I had to be quick, right? Cause I don't wanna get another one of those shitty bidding war situations. And so we make it all the way out there. Finally, he was like on the, the furthest side of Nampa I've ever even been to in my life, but we finally make it there. I pull up into the driveway and I see this guy running out of his front door, waving his hands. And I was like, what a weird guy, what, what are you doing? He comes up, he's like, I just messaged you, I just messaged you. And I said, what, y you did? So I pull up my phone and I got there at 527. He had messaged me at 527 saying that it sold. I said, it sold, what the hell, how did it sell? He was like, dude, it was crazy, man. Basically there was a guy test driving it. He was out driving it. He pulled into the driveway, another guy pulls up, gets out of the car, says, hey, was that that car driving? He said, yeah, whatever he's paying, I'll throw 500 bucks on top of it. Okay, well, there's that. So that didn't work out, right? So uh, I said, okay, well, I wish I would have saw this message sooner, but I guess that's that's just how this stuff kind of works. So at this point, I was done. I was, I was about to quit this stupid challenge. I don't want to do this anymore. I've wasted too much time. I've literally driven across the entire Valley of Idaho, which I know doesn't sound very far, but keep in mind, I get, I'm one of those guys that get really excited about things. When it doesn't work out, I get really down. So um, I was mad. I didn't want to do this challenge anymore. And at that point, I'd pretty much given up. So after a night of crying and a lot of self-loathing, I was pretty much ready to give up, but I had a feeling that next day, mid-work day, I was refreshing pages that I didn't even wanna refresh anymore because I'd just done it so much. I was literally living on Facebook for a week and I hated it. And I finally refresh a page and what do I see? I see a 2000 Honda Civic EX posted for $900. Oh my God, Anthony, what could be wrong with this, right? What could be wrong with it? Well, I click on it, I look at the seller, I'm like, oh my God, that looks like a total dad figure. That's that's what you want to buy from. You, you that's that's this is the Civic, right? So I call the guy as, as soon as I possibly could, and I said, "Hey man, does the Civic run?" He says, "Yes, it runs." I said, "Any major major issues?" He's like, "No, no major issues. It just has 217,000 miles." Okay, 
any cosmetic issues? Yeah, a couple scuffs, a couple scrapes here. Uh, but overall, it's not bad. Selling it for my son because he went to the Navy. I said, oh my freaking God. Okay, um, I want to buy it right now. Do you have PayPal? Do you have Venmo? What do you got? It's 900 bucks. Oh, I don't, I don't have any of that. I'm pretty old school. Um, I really just want cash for it. I said, okay, man. So I'm about to leave my work right now. I'm on a motorcycle today. I'm going to ride out to Kuna, Idaho as fast as I freaking can. Literally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go as fast as I can to try to get to this car. He's like, whoa, 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 slow down. Don't get into an accident. You really want it that bad? I said, dude, I want it that bad where I'm going to pay you sight unseen for it. He says, okay, I'm going to hold it for you. Holy crap, you're going to hold it for me? Are you serious? Really? You mean that? I didn't believe that. I'm like, I got to get there as fast as I can, right? What's the worst that can happen, right? Another bidding war. So I jump on the motorcycle, the BMW, which I was really excited to, to rip on that. And I ride out to Kuna as fast as I could. So I get to his house, hop off the bike, start frantically looking around the car, looking for other people showing up. And he's like, hey man, calm down. Nobody else is showing up. You're the only person I gave my address. And then there was this huge feeling. I almost wanted to cry. I was so happy. And I couldn't believe it. I said, okay, thank you so much, man. I, I just dealt with some really crappy stuff the last few days. So um, I check out the car, start it up. Everything looks great on the car. Honestly, I, I couldn't complain. For 900 bucks, I couldn't complain. Um, and then that's where things went horribly wrong. Okay, so horribly wrong is a bit exaggerated. I'll call the situation less than ideal. Now, with the engine running, I thought, I thought, thought I heard a stutter. And with me being paranoid, because I want to make sure that this engine is good and good enough for the next owner, I thought to myself, Anthony, I can do an old school form of a cylinder spark test. And an archaic form of this, where basically with the engine running, you go to the valve cover and you pull out each spark plug boot one at a time. If the engine bogs down, that's a good sign. If it doesn't bog down, then there's a bad sign. So that's exactly what I did. Now, let me preface this by saying, don't do this. Especially don't do this without gloves or a proper tool. Uh, you can get sparked or you can cause some sort of electrical issue like I'm about to have now. So I get to the third cylinder, pull it out, plug it back in, and the engine dies. Okay, well, no big deal, the engine died. Let me go start it back up. I go to start it back up and the engine just cranks and cranks and cranks. The guy's looking at me like, dude, what would you do, right? And his wife comes out of the house, says, I hear this cranking sound. It's not the Honda, is it? Because it runs perfect. And he points to me and says, yeah, he broke it. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I am sitting in the driver's seat sweating. First off, this guy thinks I just broke his car. And second off, I am on this time crunch. I promised my wife I had to be somewhere at a certain time and I'm already super behind. So I'm freaking out, right? And the guy's like, don't worry about it. You can put your bike in my garage. We'll jump in the truck and we'll drive down to AutoZone to pick up new plugs and wires. Awesome. Super cool guy. So we do that. I get back to his house and there I am doing a plug change and wire change in his front yard. Get back in the car to crank it up and it cranks and cranks and cranks. So at this point, I'm, I'm out of time. So I say, hey man, I know the car runs. I have no idea if it drives, but I'm gonna buy it anyway. So what's the worst that can happen, right? So we exchange the cash and the title and I tell him, hey, I'll be back tomorrow morning with the trailer and I'll get this thing out of your hair. So that's exactly what I did. Picked up a U-Haul trailer, came back the next morning, loaded it up with my friends. And on the drive back, I actually got spotted by a subscriber, which was pretty cool and got it back to my work. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was go to the junkyard, my favorite place, because I felt like it was probably something within the distributor that went wrong. I don't know if it was the rotor, the cap, whatever it was, but I can pick up a whole new distributor at the junkyard for 30 bucks and hopefully that fixes it. So go to the junkyard, pick up one that looked pretty decent, get back. I plug everything right back in and what happens? It starts on the first freaking crank, man. I was so jacked up. Everybody at my work was like, dude, you bought a dud, you bought a lemon. And I'm like, no, I didn't. It's awesome. So it started up and ended up being the ICM, the ignition control module that probably went bad. And so um, that new distributor from the junker that used one ended up fixing the problem. And at that point I was able to take the car on its first drive and it drove beautifully. Dude, I was so freaking ecstatic. I was like, I couldn't believe it, man. I was so pumped. So anyways, that's it. That's the whole story. That's the story of how I picked up a $900 Honda Civic and all the shit I went through before it. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for my story on how I picked up this $900 Honda Civic. Hopefully you guys found it funny. It was a little unfortunate at times, but it all worked out and I'm super happy with this car and I can't wait to see how it turns out. So as always, if you guys like this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's all the Anthony. Peace. That's good, dude. Yeah, thanks, man.
right on. Good. It's going fantastic. Don't. Yeah, yeah, just like a school project, you know. That. So I make YouTube videos with 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 with, 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 with cars and stuff, but like. Uh, it's all day Anthony. Is all is day Anthony? yeah. YouTuber, we're all gonna be on this vlog. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, oh. Is this you do car videos? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's go. Drive, drive, all right. Okay. Yeah. You'll you'll see. I think it'll probably be the next one. You'll see it. Oh, all right. Cool. Okay. Sleeper. You love sleeper. You racing people. What's happening? Something like that. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> all right. I'll see. See you guys later. Bye.